Good morning, fans of Privateer FX. Coming at you Monday, 16 Sep. We're halfway through September. Holy Lord Jesus, Mother of Mary. Amazing. Time flies when you're having fun. Uh, obviously, here's the crude chart. Uh, wild night last night. Uh, this is why the video is coming out a little bit late. Just uh, woke up, got a little bit of sleep last night. Um, let's check out what's going on and what's going to happen today. Uh, but the real main portion of volatility looks like it was last night. Things have quieted down a bit. For those of you that live under a rock, um, there was an attack on the Saudi, Saudi oil fields. Uh, this is why crude jumped uh, from around 55 bucks all the way up to uh, 63.43 last night. We're down 59.71. We talked about it on Twitter. We think this 59 level is going to hold, and we're going to see more movement north in oil. Um, we did not spend any time trading oil last night. It was a bit hectic. There was money to be made, but I don't really have a great rhythm uh, with CL, so... Unless I have a real pre-planned trade, I, I tend to avoid it. Um, I'm just using it as a bellwether, as a barometer, as to just how fucked up things are. Um, so, that's where we are here. We've come down now five bucks, uh, or four bucks, from the highs, but we're still five bucks from the lows, so it's up nine percent. 9%, let me repeat, oil is up 9%. If it cost you $100 to fill your tank next week, or not next week, if we stay here next month, it's going to be $110. Um, this this will make a mark uh, on people's budgets, uh, on people's lives. I won't go into the microeconomic side of this but um, this is really bad for countries that import and this is really bad for countries that consume a shitload of oil so big importing countries Europe imports a lot Japan imports a lot China imports a lot uh, US although they create a lot of oil they drill a lot of oil uh, consumes tons of oil so anyone consuming this has to pay of course, anyone selling it, they like it, but um, the consumption of oil is where the U.S. gets kicked in the balls. So, you know, it's our premise that this is just kind of bad in general for the global economy. We're expressing this through short stocks, uh, gap open. Obviously, um, we did trade back up to 3,000. just absolutely millisecond briefly uh, and then we've sort of been capped at this 95 area and re more recently capped at 93.50 there's no reason that we can't uh, still take a visit back to 3000 even there will be stops now above 3000 clear out some uh, intraday shorts there but we are sellers we've been trading this uh, both sides we are sellers again back up between 95 and 05 today. Core short stocks uh, is where we, we land on this. Euro, uh, not really in play on this, on this news. Higher oil prices isn't great for Europe, but... Excuse me, just having some coffee. Um, but really no real movement on the FX side. This is more of a Canadian dollar trade, a Norwegian Corona trade, or a risk trade. I only bring up the Euro chart because on just a purely technical level, and if we go back to what happened last week at ECP and Boons and all this stuff, um, this trend line is incredibly important. We will be buying Euros through this trend line today. The daily uh, portion of this line comes in 95 the hourly comes in at the figure um, we've had these highs at 10 
we're going to be paying 01s and 11s today <clears throat> on a um, double shot, double shot Monday, buying some euros through the figure and 11 with the idea that this is going to float higher and this is based on what we think is the end of a rate uh, theme in Europe, the end of negative rates. Um, or the rates are no longer going to go lower, they're going to shift their focus to fiscal. And also this is going to be, we think, <coughs> people are going to have to flee dollars uh, as the U.S. Fixed, the fixed income market has turned, and we think also the stock markets are going to turn. So this is going to create a parade out of the U.S. dollar. Anyway, buying euros here. Aussie stubbornly bid, no idea why. Uh, we're desperate to sell it. Jobless claims or, or unemployment comes out uh, Thursday. Uh, so that's going to be a big mover. Will this go today? Looks like it wants to turn. You see this sort of rounding top here. If the vol in Aussie was better, we'd sell through 60 and through 50. Um, but we're going to we're going to express this through Euro Euro Aussie, uh, which kicked us in the balls on uh, Friday. So frustrating. Uh, position size was too big. Got caught down at 60, 70. You know, a place where I should not have been selling. Um, but I just managed this so badly on the intraday book that, uh, you know, it was a dis not a disaster, but it was just a pain in the ass. But still, we like this higher. Um, this could go sideways. It could do a lot of things today. Eventually, this is going to clear 61, 60. 69 and, and this is going to head back up to um, 166.80 and the premise is euro higher and then risk off this is going to create euro aussie draft north let's take a look at this dollar cad uh, a lot of people are like you know higher oil is great for canada so this will be in play we think this will be more of a range today uh, i think you can sell you can sell between sort of 45 and 75 and you can try and take profit between 05 and 85 I don't think dollar cat is gonna go running um, running away on the downside this is too big of a global global risk uh, and if the global economy gets smoked uh, CAD's not gonna do well if this was just a pure oil thing and this wasn't like a global economy thing it would be more of a pure uh, sort of dollar CAD lower, maybe CAD yen higher. But this is more than that. This is um, this is a real fu to the global economy, and this is a real problem politically. So, just range trade dollar CAD from the short side. Dollar yen were sellers. Um, we traded 44 in the pre-market, obviously taking out some technical stuff real thin I think it was 50 given uh, 44 given 52 paid um, didn't really count in, in the in the real market even though Tokyo was out today we traded basically I guess we did get down to 50 again we've been basically 50 90 uh, we like selling this especially on a cap close just as a classic risk off uh, barometer. The other um, way of expressing this we think is Aussie Yen. We've been as high as 20 a number of times. Um, we were down at 80. I definitely did not trade 75. There was a huge bid at 80 uh, that got given. I think it got given for about 70 million at the very early open when dollar yen was down at 40. Um, so 80's been the real low. This has been a bit stubborn for us, um, but we do like Aussie Yen just as a proxy. It's kind of the same trade as short S&Ps. So careful on your sort of value at risk. 
uh, size correctly and um, keep an eye on that. Finally, let's just look at gold because when you start talking about problems with America, possible problems with America, as in if they intervene, problems with Saudi Arabia and Iran, this is very serious. Um, kind of three bully nations, big ego nations, uh, who have historically had like unsolvable problems for the last 40 or 50 years. You know, since the Shah left in Iran, it's been a problem with America. Saudi Arabia has been a problem for everyone in the Middle East forever. Um, no reason gold goes lower here. Um, gold should trickle higher. Where to buy it, I don't know. It's just tricky on the risk reward here, and we have we're expressing a lot of this through yen, so it's kind of the same trade. But if you feel more comfortable buying gold, um, there's no reason to be short gold uh, with all this going on. Let's put it that way. Finally, real quick, um, let's talk fixed income. This actually will give anyone a chance who's a little bit late on this short at fixed income game uh, a chance to get short. You can sell ZN kind of wherever you want. Um, the route is on, the bubble is bursting in front of our eyes. This kind of bar, um, this huge bar for no reason on Friday is just telling, right? Um, this trend here that started 117, went to 132, um, is now going to come to a close. So, you know, you want to draw your fibs. Where's the 50%? It's probably around here, 125. This is probably going to go back down to 120. Um, on the yield, it's even more telling. You can just see that this yield is going to go back to 3%. So we're at 190. This is now the second inning. You haven't missed anything. You missed basically this if you weren't on it. But, you know, even if you were, there was a little bit of a jag here that that ECB day was tricky. You want to sell uh, fixed income now. Uh, I don't care if the Fed is cutting. Uh, we like Boons especially. Um, but uh, ZN is going to work for you. And probably all fixed income. I was talking with uh, a colleague in the business uh, this weekend and he's short JGBs. And he was giving me the spiel on why to be short JGBs. I don't trade JGBs, but it's basically all the same trade. Fixed income is going to correct. The bubble is ending in front of our eyes. Um, pay attention to this. Okay, I've said enough. Got to get back to this. Um, we're going to be buying euro through this trend lines. We'll be trading risk off while this is all going down and watching headlines um, to see how this how this whole uh, cluster fuck in the Middle East progresses. Good luck out there, people. Make some dough. Talk to you tomorrow. Ciao.